Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. My friends in Jesus and Mary, I want to start off this program with a simple question. Have you ever been a refugee? I know that my answer is no. I've never been a refugee. But it's important that I ponder what it means to be a refugee so that I can pray and fast for the over 2 million refugees that are all of our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine at this moment. So what does it mean to be a refugee? How does that figure in terms of very specific situations? It means oftentimes you have a couple hours to grab what you can carry and you start walking. You have no guarantee of food, you have no guarantee of shelter. In the case of our Ukrainian brothers and sisters right now, uh, you're oftentimes facing sub-freezing temperatures. It doesn't matter if you're infirmed, it doesn't matter if you're older, you have to walk and walk and walk. You're walking days without any guarantee of food. And that's why we have to personalize our prayer and personalize our fasting. Many of us simply have a great difficulty in even coming up with something proximate to what a suffering it would be to be without home and shelter and food. And of course, the children aren't spared this. The parents who have been open to life are very much preoccupied, to use understatement, about their children. That's what's happening right now in a greater volume than any time since World War II. That's why we have to empathize and we have to, once again, personalize our prayer and fasting. What do I mean by personalizing your fasting? I mean... Don't think of fasting as just a checklist of what we do on on the Fridays of Lent. And and God willing, there's also fasting that happens other times uh, other than Lent for our spiritual life. Remember, Jesus says, when the bridegroom is gone, then they shall fast. Well, he's been gone for 2,000 years. All Christians are called to do penance. So we can think of a Friday fast as something we have to do rather theoretical, rather abstract. We'll do it because we're good, dedicated Catholics. But we're not thinking of people. See, we fast for people. We fast, and that's quite frankly why fasting is almost antithetical. It's almost the opposite of dieting. See, you you diet for you, but you fast for someone else. It's all about the intention. And so, When we think about two million of our brothers and sisters who are without homes, who are refugees, and thank God for the the nation and the the generous heart, the the generosity of the people of Poland who are opening their homes. There's not stations uh, for refugees. There's, There's opening homes to perfect strangers, but they're not perfect strangers, right? They're brothers and sisters ultimately in Christ because Christ is seen in in every person of challenge. I know three refugees, uh, three people who had that experience, and that would be the Holy Family. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were refugees. They know what it's like to get a couple hours of notice. In this case, even less. uh, Rise, take the child, and bring him to Egypt, because Herod's men are after him. And so, again, when we see the refugees, when we see the bombings, when we see five-year-old kids in a Ukrainian schoolroom all with rosaries in their hands, when we see uh, Ukrainian military men kneeling to the icon of Our Lady, uh, many of cases it's the icon of uh, Pokrova, which is the reference uh, of a beautiful icon of Our Lady where she's holding a large garment that is symbolizing her maternal protection, her mantle of protection. And it is a particular Eastern icon during times of trial, during times of battle, during times of war, uh, great difficulty. 
And you'll see that more and more in the news coverage of that very image. That's what we have to do for our brothers and sisters, which should lead us when we see these images. It should lead us to a greater generosity. It's not for the point of feeling sad. It's for the point of being more generous. That means when we're fasting for people rather than just an ideal, when we're fasting for the kids in the Ukraine, and we're fasting for our Russian brothers and sisters as well. We're fasting, and we should be fasting, for a conversion of heart of the Russian leadership that is uh, initiating this undebatable onslaught of moral evil. You can debate a lot about history and the different situations between the two countries. You can't morally debate an invasion of a sovereign nation and uh, affecting these gross um, war crimes which are taking place right now. That's beyond debate. That's, That's a basic question of good and evil amidst many other circumstances which could be debated, but you can't debate the unjust nature of what the Russian government is doing. So, when I say personalize our fasting, I don't mean that you have to say, well, I have to pick that person and that person's going to get my fasting. Because if you're consecrated to Our Lady, you have given her the right to designate who gets the fruits of your, 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 your prayers and, and your fastings and your sufferings. But it means for us to realize we're doing this for people. And that's what helps us to be more generous. If you are taking a, a drive, uh, maybe get five more decades of the rosary in. If you typically exercise with music, maybe five more decades of the rosary. Maybe seeing these images, which is a reality, will help us to fast a little bit more. One woman came up to me after a recent presentation. She said, I'm not putting pickles and mayonnaise in my tuna uh, for the Ukrainian people. And some could balk and say, well, what good is that going to do? Look, here's the reality, my friends. The sweet mother of God, our mother, the mediatrix of all graces, the spiritual mother of all peoples, will take the scraps from our tables in terms of sacrifice. She'll take anything and she'll multiply it to be able to help save, stave off this situation, which right now is between Russia and Ukraine. But there is no, I think, true indication that Russia would stop there. For those who thought that this was a far off war in a far off land, Things like gas prices are making that uh, more real in terms of it is not a far off war. The gas prices are incomparable to the people that are so significantly suffering in this moment of human history in between, between Russia and Ukraine and perhaps far more. So let's personalize our prayer and fasting. Let's be thinking of the Ukrainian people Let's be thinking of the Russian people uh, and, and, and the, for many, the cognitive dissonance they're going through as their leadership, uh, who is taking, by the way, every step uh, that Adolf Hitler took in the early and mid-1930s, really the mid to, to the later 1930s, in now stopping media, in violating media, in having fines up to 15 years for any reporter that reports against the, quote, military operation. So let's learn from history because it was Chamberlain, the ambassador from Britain that came back to Great Britain after talking with Hitler and his representative saying, far off war, far off land. A few years later, they were being bombed. But let's do it for the right reasons. Let's do it because we should have a a love and a great empathy for what's happening for the Ukrainian people right now. Not just because our gas prices are higher, but because these are our brothers and sisters. Here's the question uh, that follows the first question about ever being a refugee, and that is, what if it were us? What if we were called to leave our houses right now with only what we could carry on our back, without an awareness of 
any guarantee of food or shelter where we're going. That's the empathy that will help us be more generous in our prayer and in our fasting. And I would say this too, my friends, there's been a lot of recent discussion about the consecration of Russia and uh, new doubts, uh, at least in, in, in the minds of certain uh, bloggers, that what St. John Paul II did in 1984, on March 25th of 1984, well, it wasn't valid because look at what's happening in the Ukraine. Uh, I would respectfully disagree with that position, uh, and I think we have to go back to the visionary, Sister Lucia, who in 1942, when Pope Pius XII consecrated uh, the world, which included Russia, to the Immaculate Heart in seeking to fulfill, to fulfill the, the request of Fatima, Sister Lucia said it has not been accomplished. She had the untold you know, courage to say it hasn't been accomplished. Why? Because it wasn't collegial. The bishops weren't involved. That gives us an important precedent that Sister Lucia, saint as she was and will be declared, I'm quite confident, did have the courage to be obedient to Our Lady and to convey the truth that Our Lady conveyed to her that the 1942 consecration was not done. What does Sister Lucia say about the 1984 consecration? He said, it has been accomplished over and over and over again. In fact, in an interview with a dear, beloved uh, past friend, John Haffert, the founder of the Blue Army, Sister Lucia said, we're only on the third day of the week of Fatima. The first day being the, the, the age of the apparitions. The second day, symbolically, being the time between the apparitions and the consecration. She now says we're in the third day because it's the post-consecration period. So you have the Fatima visionary saying it has been accomplished. You have St. John Paul II, the Pope of Fatima, saying it has been accomplished. And then you have the extraordinary fruits, the fall of communism. But my friends, let me say very clearly, the consecration does not guarantee that later leaders will once again take an atheistic perspective, or at least, let's say, a authoritarian perspective, and seek to dominate again. The present leadership of Russia has exp expressly stated that they believe the greatest geopolitical mistake uh, that has happened uh, in the 20th century was the breakdown of the Soviet empire. So there's good reason to think that indeed that leadership is seeking to return that. So the point is, what Our Lady says at Fatima is, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph and a period of peace will be granted to the world. But it does not guarantee that every new leader of Russia is necessarily going to respond to the grace which led to the fall of communism and the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1991. So I'd say, again, Let's be careful of potential distractions to the call of prayer and fasting for the situation in Ukraine. And I must conclude by asking you, and I, I believe, and I say this without any presumption, but I believe those of you who understand that we're not going to get peace until the Holy Father proclaims Our Lady solemnly as the spiritual mother of all peoples, you see, what, what, what that does is it gives her the jurisdiction and our, yes, our, our, our acceptance, our fiat, if you will, to fully intercede in this moment of history. If you have peoples warring, you need the mother of all peoples. That's a very special title. She's the mother of all peoples. When we acknowledge her that way, then and only then can she fully intercede for the graces of peace. It is my personal firm conviction that we will not have peace between Ukraine and Russia and Russia and arguably other countries in the near future until Our Lady is invoked solemnly under the title Mother of All Peoples and all that that means. So I ask you, for those who share that conviction. 
Please pray and fast, including your fasting intentions, the heart of our Holy Father. Please avoid the tendency of a type of prayer and fasting consequentialism saying, well, I just don't think that's possible. Let's be faithful and realize that prayer and fasting can expel demons. Prayer and fasting can move mountains. Prayer and fasting can change the course of human history. Don't limit prayer and fasting based on our own limited uh, idea of the situation. We can't read anybody's heart. We don't know where the heart of Pope Francis is. We know he loves Our Lady. And right now, he's horrified, as he's expressed, with what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. So sometimes it's grace, sometimes it's tragedy that leads us to the next step of faith in acknowledging we need supernatural intervention. We are not going to clean up this mess, which we call present humanity, as particularly manifest right now with the Russia invasion of Ukraine and all the international ramifications. We're not going to do this on our own. The UN's not going to do this. New budgetary solutions, new finding of oil is not going to do this. We need the mother. She tells us at Fatima and Akita, she alone is able to help us in light of the calamities that approach. So let's believe her. And so I ask you as part of your prayer and fasting, and I keep emphasizing fasting, my friends, because fasting multiplies the fruits of our prayers. It's like a supersizing. It it exponentially increases the efficacy. So fast for the heart of Pope Francis that he will invoke, solemnly invoke the mother of all peoples for the situation between Russia and Ukraine and very possibly, very soon, Russia and other nations again uh, as as well. Uh, This is a reality that I think we have to uh, be open to, uh, and I think many things point to it. So let's do the supernatural thing. Let's go to Our Lady. Let's go to the spiritual mother of all peoples. Nations can't do, peoples can't do on their own, brothers and sisters, nations cannot do on their own what the mother can't do. Let's allow her to do that. So I also encourage you to pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. Uh, We are... It, 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 this is always bittersweet, but uh, we are sending out thousands of these prayer cards like never before because I think people have a new spiritual awareness of the times that we're in and the power of this prayer. Uh, what I'm saying about my conviction about having to invoke the spiritual mother of all peoples or my conviction that the mother of all peoples, that our lady wants to be known as the spiritual mother of all peoples, is not simply my own conviction. It is coming from a number of authentic uh, apparitions and elocutions throughout the world right now. So let's believe her and let's work for her goal. And that means praying and fasting for the heart of the Holy Father. If you want this prayer card, uh, you can contact us at Mary at Mother of All Peoples.com. We're really sending them out by the thousands. Uh, they're free of charge. If any of you feel called to assist us financially, uh, I've never, ever asked for any financial help in all uh, of the uh, episodes of Mary Live, but as these prayer card requests are, uh, are growing more and more, we, we want to facilitate them as quickly as possible. If you feel called to financially assist specifically for the printing and the distribution of the prayer cards, uh, please contact us at mary at motherofallpeoples.com. If not, Our Lady will take care of it, not to worry. Call and ask for the prayer be an apostle of the prayer, send it out, because this prayer is made for this moment of human history because it's asking Jesus to send the Holy Spirit into the hearts of all nations, including warring nations, so that the Holy Spirit can prevent degeneration, moral breakdown, disaster, and war. That's why the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, which is completely approved by the Bishop of Amsterdam, Uh, completely approved by the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, is something I believe has been given to us for this very moment. So let's end by praying the prayer. And once again, uh, please uh, be as generous as you can with the prayer and fasting for the situation in the Ukraine, for the people in the Ukraine, as well as for the person, for the heart of our Holy Father, that he will take the optimum Marian 
uh, default and, and, and declare and invoke her as the mother of all peoples in this situation. And we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much. God bless you all.